Hello everyone, my name is Justin Kim, and today I'll be discussing how ultrasound could be used to visualize and help diagnose gastrointestinal diseases. So many of the benefits of using ultrasound for other organ systems are the same for using it to examine the gastrointestinal tract. For instance, it is non-invasive, has no ionizing radiation, and is less expensive than other imaging techniques. One particular benefit of using ultrasound in examining the GI tract is that the patient usually does not have to fast prior to the ultrasound, unlike other techniques such as an endoscopy. To perform a gastrointestinal ultrasound, the patient should be lying flat in a supinated position. A curved linear or linear probe and a depth of 10 to 15 centimeters is usually used for the examination. The first disease I'll be discussing is appendicitis. Appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix. A blockage of the appendix lumen can cause an infection, resulting in the organ to be filled with pus. If the appendicitis worsens, it can cause bursting of the organ. There are over 250,000 cases per year in the U.S. Pain usually begins around the patient's belly button and travels to the lower right side of the abdomen. Other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, constipation, diarrhea, and bloating. Bloating. Some signs of appendicitis on ultrasound include the appendix becoming dilated and non-compressible, and fluid can also accumulate around the appendix. So here we have two images of an appendix. We have on the left side, um, a longitudinal image of a normal appendix versus on the right side, an inflamed appendix. As you can see, the latter has a significantly greater diameter. Next, we have two transverse images that demonstrate the non-compressibility of the appendix. The left, we have an image of when the probe is used to compress the appendix. On the right, we have an image when the probe is not pushed against the appendix. We can actually see the measurements of the appendix diameter at the bottom. It is 0.866 centimeters on the left and 0.925 centimeters on the right. As you can see, there is no significant difference in the change in diameter. Lastly, we have a transverse view of the appendix, and there is an anechoic region next to the appendix indicating the presence of fluid. The next disease I'll be discussing is diverticulitis. Diverticulitis is an inflammatory disease of the colon. As an individual ages, the colon can form small pouches called diverticula. Diverticulitis occurs when the diverticula become inflamed. There are about 200,000 cases per year in the U.S. Pain usually begins around the patient's belly button and travels to the lower left abdomen. Other symptoms include nausea, vomiting, and changes in bowel habits. Signs of di diverticulitis on ultrasound include bowel wall thickening and abnormal fat accumulation around diverticula. Here we have an image of a thickened colon at the top. At the bottom of the image, we have an anechoic pouch that indicates a diverticulum. Next, we have an image of a diverticulum and hyperechoic fat surrounding it. This is indicative of inflammation. Lastly, we have hepatic steatosis, which is also known as fatty liver disease. It is the accumulation of fat in the liver. It's caused by an inability of the liver to break down all the fat that it is transport to it. This disease is very prevalent around the world it is estimated that there are about 1.24 billion cases of fatty liver disease worldwide. Fatty liver disease does not always cause symptoms. However, when they are present, they include pain in the upper right abdomen and fatigue. Signs of fatty liver disease on the ultrasound include increased echogenicity of the liver and loss of visibility of hyperechoic regions around portal lines. Here we have uh, an ultrasound image of the liver. On the left, we have a normal liver, and on the right, we have a fatty liver. As you can see, the right liver has higher echogenicity than the normal liver. Here's another example of the increased echogenicity. However, here we can actually compare the echogenicity to the kidneys. The left is a normal liver, and we can see that the echogenicity is pretty similar to the kidney. However, on the right image of the fatty liver, we can see that the liver has higher echogenicity than the kidney. Lastly, on the image uh, on the left of a normal liver, the portal vein is distinctly visible with a hyperechoic region tracing around the vein. 
On the right image, the portal vein is not as clearly shown and there's a loss of the hyperechoic region around the vein. The increased fat content of the liver clouds the visibility of the portal vein. To conclude, although ultrasound is not always the gold standard for the diagnosis of gastrointestinal diseases, it is evident that it provides great insight for these uh, disease pathologies. It is particularly helpful for the first line step of helping patients with abdominal pain and other gastrointestinal issues. Furthermore, the results of the ultrasound examination can guide providers on the next tests and examinations that the patient needs. Therefore, ultrasound is a very valuable tool that can be used in conjunction with other method methods to help diagnose gastrointestinal diseases. Thank you.